even just getting one to three hours less sleep per night for three nights in a row. I mean, think how common is it to not to get one hour less of sleep a night for three nights in a row? So common, yes. so common. It happens to me all the time, all the time. And there's been studies that have looked at, well, what does happen to normal, quote unquote, healthy people that haven't been diagnosed with any sort of metabolic disease? Well, what happens is after three nights of getting one to three hours less, less sleep per night is that their body um, isn't, disposing of glucose properly, so their blood glucose levels stay elevated. On top of that insulin, they're not um, making enough insulin to lower the blood glucose levels, and so you get this double whammy, almost looking like insulin uh, resistant uh -huh. or pre-diabetic, if you were to just look at the hard numbers. Yes. And again, this is just from not getting enough sleep for three nights in a row. Wow. And it's not even like full-on sleep restriction where you're, ta you're taking away you know, four or five hours of their sleep. It's just one to three hours less. And so, I mean, it really has profound effects on metabolism. And this sort of accumulates. So there's, there's a cumulative effect. It's called sleep debt, right? So when you're getting mm -hmm. less and less sleep each night, it's like you build up this sleep debt. Can you and pay off the sleep debt ever? So the, 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 the good news is, is that believe it or not, at least with respect to the you know, metabolic effects and also the cognitive effects, is that exercise can help negate a lot of that. And that's what I also learned with yes. my own personal experience. <clears throat> yeah, and your quote, you have a quote on this that I saw online that said, even one hour of sleep less per night for three nights can disrupt how your body processes sugar and lead to mild insulin resistance. But some good news here, HIT can almost reverse it. So can you go with less sleep but then train hard and reverse the negative effects? So according to research, yes. And according to my own anecdotal data, yes. And, I, and there's, there's, a, there's reasons why. So when you're doing high intensity interval training, so this is where you're going, you know, you're doing intervals that are hard. Mm -hmm. So you're going above what you normally would do if you're just going for a jog. You're going like 80, 85% of your max heart rate. And you're doing it for a period of time that's an interval. And then you kind of have a recovery period where you're going lighter, right? So you're doing a lot of, you know, vigorous intensity exercise where it's like during that interval, you can't talk because you're, yeah. you're working out too hard. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the real test here. Um, what happens when you're working out really hard like that is that you're pushing your energy system to utilize glucose only. And what happens is you utilize glucose only and you make a metabolite called lactate. And everyone thought lactate, this metabolite you're making when you're going hard, is this, you know, waste product, byproduct. It's not useful. Turns out very, very wrong. Um, lactate itself is not only used by other tissues. So when you're making lactate, your muscles are making lactate because they're using glucose. The reason they're using glucose is because your body can't get oxygen to your muscle quick enough to use oxygen mm. um, as energy basically and make it through something using the mitochondria. Right, right. So basically you're making this lactate and using glucose instead, right? And the lactate then gets shuttled into the brain, it gets shuttled into the heart, into the liver. And it's not only used as a very energetically favorable source of energy, it's also called what's called a signaling molecule. It's the way your muscle communicates with other parts of the body, including going back into the muscle. And so what lactate does is it signals to the cells hey, make more of this or make less of this. And what it does to the muscle is the muscle's going, I'm consuming a lot of glucose here because that's the only energy I can use. I need to make a way to get more of it. And so lactate actually signals to your muscle to make transporters for glucose, more of them come up. So, so transporters for glucose are kind of sitting below the surface of the muscle. They're not really letting glucose in all the time. But when lactate comes around, they wake up, they go to the surface of the muscle and they just allow a lot more glucose to come in. Where are they getting that glucose from? Well, the glucose is from your food or from gluconeogenesis, the process of making glucose from other um, materials like glycerol, for example, uh -huh. or amino acids. But is it but, pulling it from like visceral fat or more from the food that you just intake? Um, usually it's from, from the food or glycogen, okay. stored as glycogen. Okay. But um, the point is that those, those glucose transporters that come up to the muscle stay there for like 48 hours. And so your body becomes very, all the glucose that you're eating for the next two days is getting taken up into your muscle very effectively mm. and efficiently. And so the net effect is, you know, this high intensity interval training is 
getting that glucose out of your, your bloodstream and bringing it to your muscle where you want it. And so if you go back to the sleep story, you know, and there's multiple studies showing this, that people that even do high intensity level training before they're sleep deprived, or they do it after they're sleep deprived, it doesn't matter if you're doing it within a 48 hour window or so of being, getting less sleep, what's happening is your glucose regulation resets, right? Because you're, you're, you're causing that stress on your muscle to make more of those transporters and so glucose, or, glucose gets taken in better. And then it also affects um, insulin signaling and, as well. So there's a lot of other ways that it's happening. So if I'm, gonna, if I'm going to, if I know I'm gonna get less sleep tonight, is it useful to say, let me do a hard high intensity interval training workout six hours before or in the morning and really push myself kind of hard for these 30 to 45 minutes uh, knowing I'm gonna get less sleep and I'm gonna need to be on the next day, like I've got a lot of meetings and I'm running around or I'm traveling and I'm gonna be, you know, jet lagged. What will that do for your mind or your body the next day? So those studies have been done and with respect, with respect to the metabolism, yes, doing it before, for sure, it's going to affect. Now, if you're talking about cognition and brain function, right. I would say, Unfortunately, you're going to want to do it the next day after you've been sleep deprived really? before your meeting. So you wake up sleep deprived. You should go do it then. Right then. Really? Yeah, right then. So. But you're already exhausted. You're, you're like, you're where am I going? I've got go. my keys. I got to go back. I, uh, I'm like, wake up. I'm going to sleep right now. But calm. do you have ten minutes? Because that's what's been shown. Ten minutes of high intensity interval training can improve blood flow to the brain. It improves memory. It improves cognition. And it only took ten minutes to do wow. it. So maybe not the 30 minutes, right, right. but not, 10 minutes. Not like a CrossFit style. Not like a full on, like the hardest thing that you usually no. do when you're on, on your game, but like okay. 10 minutes, right? Go on 10 minutes, get on a Peloton or a bike or whatever, and you do a 10 minute, whatever your program is, and it will, I, I do it all the time. I do it all the time. Because you're sleep deprived all the time. Well, like if <laughs> yeah. I'm like going to Florida, and I sure. live in California and I have yeah. to give a talk at like eight in the morning, which is like five in the morning my time, and I'm already sleep deprived from the yeah. travel, right? I will absolutely get up and do a hit first thing in the morning before the talk, even though it's already pretty darn early for me. And you're tired. And I'm and tired, you're... and that's the last thing I want to do. But like, I'm like 10 minutes. Really? Like, I'll sit and drink coffee for 10 minutes. What's going to be better, right? The coffee sounds Both. better. Right? <laughs> I get the coffee before the exercise. <laughs> that coffee sounds pretty good when you're tired. Um, so, how long will that positive effect last for? If you do, a, you're sleep deprived the night before. You wake up. You got a lot going on, but you're tired. You got to wake up and get started. You do a 10, 15 minute hit style workout. How long will that make you feel awake uh, or feel sharp and clear? Like how long will that last for? I, it probably depends on a lot of factors, other factors too. Uh, I will say this. Um, you mentioned doing the hit like like the day bef like before you're going to go, you know you're going to be sleep deprived, right? And then you're, gonna, you're exhausting yourself, then you're exhausted. But, yeah. but you know what? You're In a way, so I'm talking about like, I talked about doing it right before you, whatever, whatever your meeting or yeah. your podcast or whatever it is, you have to be on, on point, right? Um, mostly because like that's when you really, like you do, it's like the peak. But I will say this, yes, if you do it before, you still get brain benefits because again, um, coming back to lactate, so lactate, it, it all comes down to, in order to make lactate, you have to, you have to work hard. You have to be going 85% of your max heart rate, you know, and doing that 10, 20, 30 minutes, right? The more, the more you do wow. it, it's a dose dependent effect. Wow. That lactate goes into the brain. In fact, the brain is one of the biggest consumers of it. And it increases something in the brain called brain drive neurotrophic factor, BDNF. Wow. And this is something that will help you. It, it, it's something that increases the growth of new neurons in the hippocampus. It increases the connections between neurons, right? So you're actually going to help with memory, long-term memory, short-term memory as well. Wow. And it also improves something called neuroplasticity. So that is the ability of your brain to adapt to a changing environment, right? And that's very important. As we age, our brain becomes, quote unquote, less plastic, less adaptable. We're not able to changed like you can't teach an old dog new tricks right you've heard that it's kind of like that like your brain is less adaptable well neuroplasticity um, is something that you want to you want to maintain it with age and brain derived neurotrophic factor regulates that so mm. um, because you're you're getting that brain derived neurotrophic factor and there have been a, a variety of 
you know, studies that have really shown that you, you do increase it from a particularly vigorous exercise. Again, the lactate's key. So um, going back to your question, I do want to I, I do want to sort of caveat what I originally said with, yes, it is going to improve brain function doing it before as well. But if you're wanting that like immediate blood flow effect where you just, you feel it like really um, doing it right before is, is better. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, kind of better. And how long do you think that would last? Like if you're, you're going from LA to Florida one day, you sleep four or five hours a night, you got to wake up early, you work out you got your speech like how could you go till dinner pretty sharp or is it really gonna last for like three hours that oh. sharpness before it starts to fade right yeah you see what i'm saying like yeah. all right i did this hit workout now i can go another 24 hours sleep deprived and no, still be on no i don't not for the brain yeah for the glucose stuff it lasts it lasts the body but not the brain not the brain no yeah it, it does you do need at least like you're gonna start to feel tired yeah right and you might actually need a, like a little nap or something a little nap yep 